power of self-reflection, exploring lived experience. There's a quote that comes to mind that just really displays this concept. It comes from John Dewey. He wrote, we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. And that's gonna be the centerpiece of my talk today. You see, back in 2013, I was this hot shot police detective assigned to the sex crimes unit. My job was to interview victims that have gone through very horrific things. And I was very good at my job. At least I thought I was. And I'm interviewing, and I, my, my job is to go get the perpetrator. Put the perpetrator in jail, let's get a conviction, serve justice to these victims in front of me. So one particular day, I remember I was having difficulty getting a disclosure. A woman sat in front of me with her victim advocate, and it took extra long, and I eventually got enough where I felt I could move forward with this case. And the victim left, and this very courageous victim advocate said something to me that changed my life forever. And she asked me a question. She said, why are you referring to this woman as a victim? And I'm like, well, what, what should I refer to her as? I'm, I'm a police detective. She's a victim. Why don't you refer to her as a survivor? And I'm like, what is this? Some type, and I'm, to myself, what is this, a game of semantics? Or? But what she proceeded to explain to me really changed my, my way of thinking. And what she said was, look, everybody knows what your role is. Your role is to be a police detective and to do all these things. But when you come into the room, you're a big guy, you got a loud voice. Um, but when you treat someone like a victim, it's like a label. When you treat someone like a survivor, that's empowering. And what I learned was my role, although correct, I'm here to investigate these, these crimes, that's not the role this woman wanted me to do, to be for her. She wanted me to partner with her and to empower her. And guess what? I began, I self-reflected, and I began doing these interviews differently. And you know what I got? More disclosures. So I'm no longer a hotshot police detective. Now I'm a lieutenant. And I'm supervising the teams that I used to work for. I currently supervise the sex crimes unit, the child abuse unit, Internet Crimes Against Children, and the Sex Offender Registration Unit. And what I've learned is, how do I put this to use, this, this concept of self-reflection and what role? You cannot rely on experience. And I have to be a lifelong learner. This is a, a journey that will forever be with me if I really want to be the type of leader that I want to be. So, not too long ago, my daughter, who's sitting right there, she's 13, she showed me this project, and this is a quote she had from her project, seventh grade project. Experience is a hard teacher because she gives the test first, the lesson afterward. And I'm like, wow, I like that. I want to use that. <laughs> and what it allowed me to think was, it's, it's like a latent fingerprint. We, we rely so much on experience like I did all those years, because that's how I was trained, but you have to be open to listening to other things and assuming different roles, positioning yourself in different, in different ways. And the way I do it now is I tell myself, well, what, how, what are the relationships that I have? Uh, Viktor Frankl, in his uh, famous book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, has this quote. He says, a man who becomes conscious of the responsibility he bears toward a human being who affectionately waits for him or to an unfinished work will never be able to throw away his life. He knows the why for his existence, will be able to bear almost any how. And while the context is different, and he was in a concentration camp, it's about if you value those relationships and you want to do better in those relationships, then you have to constantly self-reflect. You have to constantly self-analyze. And you have to have a mind of inquiry instead of just advocacy. So how does this work for me? Well, uh, I read a lot, and I put to use a lot of what I, what I read, and I consider my roles. 
So for example, when somebody brings a problem to me today, I know with my experience what I need to do. But I stop and pause. And I stop and pause and I reconsider my role. This is the process of the self-reflection. My default setting is to be an advocate. I used to think that was the answer to everything. I just, I'm just gonna be an advocate. Assume the advocacy role. Until I came to the, this program here, the, uh, the MSCL program, and Ken Blanchard pulls me aside and tells me, as I'm, we're crafting the, my leadership point of view, that it's, it's, it's more than that. You have to be able to partner with others to understand what your role is. And in my current work across the street, my PhD program in leadership studies at, at the School of Leadership, this is a centerpiece to what we do. So let me go over just six roles that I assume um, every day, and I'll share a story that happened today, in fact. So I told you, advocacy is my default setting. And really what that means is, as my professors have everyone, that literally means to add voice, right? That, that, that's literally what it means. The problem with advocacy, as Peter Senge in, the, uh, in one of his books says, it's advocacy without inquiry begets more advocacy. And you start advocating more for yourself than for others. So sometimes my role is not to be an advocate. Maybe those that come and bring a problem to me is to be an ally, to partner with them, to speak up about problems, but in partnership with others, where others know that I'm an ally to them. Maybe I just need to be an affiliate, affiliate with a cause, affiliate with a program, uh, almost like an MOU um, with, with other units, other, other concepts. But maybe sometimes I need to be an activist. Maybe I need to rally the troops Maybe I need to recruit. Maybe I need to, uh, maybe what somebody wants me to do is to uh, be the leader in, in, in that cause. And here, I've learned a lot about how to do that here at the University of San Diego. Maybe I should just be a mentor. Show me the way. But even greater, how about being a sponsor? I put my name to you. I sponsor you. I know I have power, so I sponsor you. So today, had a young lady, a young hotshot detective, come to me. She's uh, of Southeastern, Southeast Asian descent. And she says, I'm, I'm conflicted, because people want me to promote. They want me to promote to, to be a sergeant. I don't know if I'm ready, uh, but this is what I think I need to do. I want to try out. Maybe I can go in, uh, out, out and, and try it out for uh, uh, a month or two and see if I like it. It'll give me. And she's telling me this whole story about what is her need, and my immediate is what? I'm gonna advocate for her. I believe in her. But I stopped and paused and I asked her, what role would you like me to take? This literally happened six hours ago. And I said, would you like me to take what you're telling me and bring it to the bosses and, and to see what opportunities are out there for you to be an acting supervisor? Would you like me to go with you and, 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 and do this, would you like to do this by yourself? Would you like me to sponsor you? She goes, yeah, can you please sponsor me? I want you to, basically she said, I want you to say that you believe in me and that I want this opportunity. But I also want the opportunity to tell my bo the, the boss for myself and I want to advocate for myself. So if I hadn't self-reflected, I would have just done what I, most people do. They run, hey, hey, I'm trying to do the good thing here. She's great. I trust her, please. And, but that's not what she needed. She needed me to act in a different role. And that's an example of how I self-reflect. The self-reflection is a monologistic process and a dialogistic process. It needs both. It's not about just you talking to yourself, but you co-creating this process with others. So why don't we reposition, re reframe the quote that I had earlier. What if we say instead of reflecting on experience is a much better teacher because she provides the lesson first for the test that is assuredly coming afterward. That is the lesson. That is how we prepare ourselves. But this, so I invite you to make this tool, this, this, this practice of self-reflection a a more prominent tool in your toolbox. Uh, as Maya Angelou once said, um, it's, people will forget what you did, people will forget what you said, but people will always remember how you made them feel. When you self-reflect more, at least for me, what I've noticed is that 
people enjoy their time more around me, they feel more valued, and they never forget how I've made them feel. Thank you.